This is Ark Survival Ascended, the more attractive younger sister to Ark Survival Evolved. I have 100 days to beat Ark Survival Ascended, the island map. To make this challenge more difficult, I am only doing 20 minute day cycles, which gives me less time to gather resources, tame dinosaurs, and run the caves to hunt for artifacts. This was mostly recorded live over on Twitch, so feel free to come and join us over there. So tell your significant other to go and make yourself a sandwich, and when they don't, Get off your lazy ass and do it yourself. Welcome to my 100 days in Ark Survival Ascended. Ah, here we are waking up on a super high graphical beach. You know, I always thought that this was sand. I didn't know they were all rocks. Seems an uncomfortable way to wake up. Now, in every typical Ark start, we would always go and punch a tree. But not this time. This time we're going to do a note run because that's kind of what you do on the island to get some extra big levels. But there's one problem. Yes, raptors. <laughs> They, they suck. Anyways, once I respawned, I spawned closest to the four times explorer note. And I already have a feeling that this run's going to be a little bit scuffed. So let's just go here. Even though the stairs leading back up, it's always fun to jump off of this cliff. Moving on to the next explorer note, we spotted a dodo. And we all know what I love to do to dodos. Then we got murked by a raptor. I think it was unhappy that I punched the dodo in the face. That death kind of screwed up our little uh, note run. So yeah, anyway, well, let's move on. With some basic tools and a spear in hand, I went and watched the fight happen. I wasn't going to get involved because kind of like the UFC, I kind of like to watch instead of participate. That was until the parasol started charging after me. Now, a new thing in ASA, if you kill the parents, you can then go and imprint on its babies, which means now I have two little parasol babies that are all mine. I named them Tweedledee and Tweedledum. In the name of progress, I then made myself a one little foundation and then put a forge down. Yes progress i'm unsure where any metal nodes are around me so i do know that you can go and collect these little river rocks and you can get a little bit of metal from them then i went to go farm some more resources to go and expand our little pathetic thing we call a base day two we added some more foundations on it and a campfire and a storage box to store all of our juicy juicy loot can't forget the smithy either we need a smithy mainly so we can make this metal pickaxe duh that, that's just what you do in this game unsure of all the dangers around us i made sure to put up a couple walls just to you know obviously make sure that we're safe but just before i could finish putting up all these walls a freaking kano came through they're kind of stupid so i kind of tried to kill it but that didn't work i then had a stranger come and meet me this is mr pineapples he was playing on the server currently yes this server's live and public to anyone that wants to join just join my discord for some more information on how to do that day three we made ourselves a crossbow for taming purposes i basically just went afk while we crafted up a bunch of arrows Oh, and you might be wondering what happened to Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Well, well they died a couple nights ago to some piranhas. I, I don't know what you expect of me. This, this just happens. I then went and murdered Tweedledee and Tweedledum's long lost cousin. I needed as much meat as I could get so I could spoil it. So then I could craft some narcotics. Now that I had everything I needed to tame something, I went out to go find something worthy to tame. Instead, I ran into a big oversized Neanderthal named Fang. And then I ran into, yes, my worst enemy right now, a raptor. Oh, no, raptor. Ooh. And die. Day four, I had to replace all my gear and thought it might be a good idea to put some armor on. Oh, and I also added my chibi into this. Yes, I have my very own mod in Ark Survival Ascended. You can just search it up in the mod directory. This is him, my dragon demon. He doesn't have a name yet, so suggest some in the comments below. And then if I pick the name that you choose, well, you'll probably get a like next to your next to the comment and you're really cool. More proof that this was a stupid place to build? Yes, that's a Therizino trying to attack us through our base. Ark Survival Ascended is full of a lot of bugs and exploits, and this is one that I'm happy is still in the game. Yeah, I can hit it through the wall, and it can't touch me. How cheesy is this? Well, I'll put it at a macaroni and cheese level. We're back off trying to find ourselves a tame. We're aiming to try and get ourselves a Pteranodon. A lot of the creatures around our base are kind of low levels or too hard to tame right now. So this might help us go and explore and find better tames. We ended up taming this Pteranodon. It's only a level 37, but at the time I couldn't see what level it was and that's just the way it is. I don't have any crazy mods in this playthrough, just some basic ones to help us get through and our rates and stuff I've been adjusting along the way. Day five, I added these boys into my alliance. But before that could happen, I decided to go for a little nap. I needed a saddle for my PT in order to ride it so the best way to get them right now is to kill turtles i'm glad these things are slow because uh they kind of hurt when they hit you i won't lie though it's kind of hilarious that they think they can catch you couple turtles down we had enough keratin to be able to make ourselves a pteranodon saddle and now it's time to hit that big blue sky yes it's that time again where i show you guys something really really cool and give you something away for free and in return i can feed my kids because yes this is honkai star rail a free-to-play epic space fantasy rpg made by the same creators of genshin impact you can play this on either mobile or pc and the best part of this is the game data transfers between both so no worrying about starting new accounts 
In Honkai Star Rail, you travel through the universe finding unique treasures, solving various puzzles, and learn the deep lore of this universe has to offer. One of my favorite features of this game, the reimagined tactical combat system. Yes, it sounds like a mouthful, but you can literally build your team to suit your own playstyle. And it's kind of cool that each character has a crazy visual effect for each attack. Like this delicate girl with a chunky green tail. Ho ho. This introverted girl's tail though, has a mind of its own. Like literally, it has a mind of its own. It's some sort of like spirit fox wolf thingy. Hoho is a wind type support character on the path of abundance. She can restore allies health and provide attack and energy buffs to her teammates. Then there's the handsome hero, Agenti. This guy's personality is, um, it's kind of interesting. He's described as the silent gentleman. Now, what does that mean? Well, play some of the game and find out. Trust me, it's pretty hilarious. But he is the physical type character on the path of erudition with really good AoE attacks. Agenti favors the Rose, which you can see in most of his abilities. Version 1.5 just dropped and you'll get a chance to go on some ghost busting missions with Ho-Ho. You'll also get to try out the 4 star character Hanya, the physical type character. Also, with Zhang Zhou's new story, releases a new map, Fiextral Garden. And guess what? 10 free pools await you. Log in for 7 days to get 10 free Star Rail special passes and use them to draw Hyohyo or Agenti. Guys, go ahead. Use my link in the description below. Download this game now for free. And you can also use my redemption code in the description below to receive yourself 50 Stellar Jade. Thank you, Honkai Star Rail, for sponsoring this video. The first destination that I headed to was this little mountain here because I know here it has a little bit of crystal and some metal. Our PT can't carry much, but it'll be enough to be able to take back and, you know, get things going. Day six, we're out on the hunt for some drops. They're significantly different and a lot better than they were in ASE. And as luck would have it, this had a journeyman PT saddle in it. Finally, the drops in this game are actually really good. I had to go do something IRL, so uh, yeah, we, we just stared at a flame for a little bit now. Interesting enough, this is kind of fun to look at in this game. It's 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 a pretty, pretty beautiful game. I then added a spyglass mod into this game, hoping that it'll help us find some better tames. Specifically, a better Pteranodon, because the one that we're riding now is ass. It has about as much stamina as a pack-a-day smoker. Day 7 and that PT that we knocked out is fully tamed, and is now level 142. We've moved on from a Bob Marley that smokes a lot, to a Usain Bolt that can fly for days. It's weird how Jamaica can produce both sides of the spectrum. Now that we have a decent PT, to try and level it quicker, I figured it might be a good idea to hit this Explorer note. It's about time that I start working on our forever base, but there's a damn Therizino that's right directly where I want to build. It was trying to kill my PTs and I couldn't have that, but I kind of panicked and one was following me. It killed me. Yeah, this, this, this all happened. I ended up getting my gear back and placing down a storage box. This is going to be a place that I'm just going to put all the materials in before we start building. Really happy with our brand new PT. I decided to give it a name. We named it Spinky. I don't know where that name come from or, or what it means, but yeah, it's, it's a uh, Spinky. As this day ended, we jetted on off to go and try and find ourselves our next tame. I want to try and get myself an Argy as they are a great utility tame. They can fly for long distances, they have a massive carry weight, and they can also pick up a lot of dinos, which makes it a little bit easier to tame them. The only problem is, is trying to find a decent level Argy. I was searching around a lot of the known places that they spawn, but couldn't find any. Well, any that was a decent enough level to tame. That was until we made our way over to the snow, and I found this level 85. It's not a great level, but it's gonna have to do. So I went down and found this flat and peaceful area so I could build my trap. This particular trap is designed by Captain Fat Dog. I want to give him a shout out because he has a lot of great traps on his YouTube. As luck would have it, I ended up finding this level 110 RG instead and managed to kite this one all the way into this trap. Oh crap, I missed! Aha, perfect. Now to lock him in. Haha, <laughs> you're trapped now, sucker. Whilst it lay snoring, I stood there with my heroic pose. Well, until it woke up and stood there in all its glory. Since ASA has no cryopods or anything, I had to lead this bad boy all the way home. It was quite the grueling trip. I know I could add a cryopod mod in, but I want to keep this playthrough as vanilla as possible. Day 9, and it's all about building this base. And man, just look at this moment here. Look, look at this waterfall. What a great place to build a base. Guess we better start building with a super satisfying montage. I'm going to name this bird Teresa. And there we have it. It's quaint and simple, but we'll work on it later and make it look pretty. But this will get us through the night. Day 10, we're smashing some Dwayne Johnsons. This time, I was trying to build this. Yeah, it's a trap so we could use our RG to pick some dinos up and trap them. The problem was, we spent the whole rest of the day trying to find something worthy to tame, and uh, yeah, we came up dry. No, there was literally nothing. 
there were some metal nodes though and th that's a good thing i suppose you can never have too much metal or crystal day 11 we did some more exploring on our big ass pigeon stumbled across this blue drop with some interesting items in it and gathered some cementing paste from these beaver dams we're gonna need a lot of this cementing paste eventually i mean you can never really have enough can you day 12 we spotted ourselves a wild triceratops in its local habitat the plains you know what i wanted to do i wanted to shoot it in the butt well really we're trying to tame it so we're trying to lead it all the way back to that little trap that we've made now these dinos are supposed to have some special ai pathing that doesn't allow them to get trapped guess i proved that wrong didn't i the one thing that i love about the asa update is how the trike's butt wiggles when they run day 13 i decided to fly all the way over to herbivore island it's really important that we make friends with some utility dinos that can help us progress in this game and there's no better way to befriend dinos than to kidnap them from their current peaceful existence shoot them in the head a couple times with some arrows and force them into slavery day 14 and our new best friend is asleep still so while we wait for our new best friend to wake up i decided to decorate my base a little bit here's a wall map a random white flag and a cooking pot all of these things we found in drops so i figured i might as well use it i then went out to go and do some more exploring there's so many other dinos that i need to tame and let's see if we can go and try and find some i wasn't able to find any this day but we did find a giga with its head buried in the ground day 15 we went and picked up our next utility dinosaur this dodicarus because it's kind of grayish white it reminds me of um sea men i make sure to bring all of these dinosaurs back to my base to trap them i find it's a lot easier to do it here just in case i need some extra resources or whatever and it's, it's right next to my base i know it's just a good place to be and the fact that we don't have cryopods or soul balls in this game i just want to have them nice and close to home I feel like I'm getting a little bit carried away with this photo mode, but damn, it makes the scenery look really good. I mean, can we take a moment to respect this kind of gaze that we have on this moment? Day 16 with our brand new semen friend, we put it straight to work, smashing rocks. I'm going to need to upgrade my base quite soon because obviously we're going to have a lot of dinos and we need a lot of space. So we're also going to need a lot of rocks. Day 17, I went back out to go and find some more useful tames. And with my new spyglass mod that I've added, we found this 125 bezel buffer. Took it back home and dropped it straight into this trap and knocked it out. You asleep there, little buddy? Day 18, I picked up a beaver from its natural habitat and took it the scenic route all the way back to my trap base. I'd forgotten that we still had the frog inside the trap, so to avoid any mishaps, we picked him up and took him outside. Then I could get to work turning this beaver into our slave best friend, best friend, best friend. The problem is my taming rates were a little bit funky and uh, this, this guy just wasn't taming very fast at all so uh day 19 i just stared right deep into your eyes yeah you like that and with all that time messing around uh yeah the the, the beaver woke up at this point i was unsure what i was going to do with this beaver but i was sure i was going to make a fabricator and with a fabricator we can start making electrical items we just need some silica pearls first to be able to make electronics and i know that this place is a pretty good location to find silica pearls problem is in asa they're kind of hard to see underwater like really hard they used to like glow See, like, this is silica pearl. Did you, did you see it? You barely saw it, right? We didn't find many silica pearls, but there's lots of oil out here, and I didn't really want to leave empty-handed. Day 20, and we're back to knocking out this beaver once again. Whilst we waited for this beaver to tame up, I placed some water pipes in the water around us. Did you know you don't need to add other pipes? You just need to put the intakes in. This is a great feature. I love it. And then I took our dodo cat to go smash some more stones. Now the beaver is fully tamed. Now, of course, I had to put this beaver to work straight away. After all, a good beaver likes big, long, strong wood. Now that we have a bunch of utility dinos, I can now get enough resources to make some serious changes to this base. I'm planning on renovating this to make it big enough so we can breed tons of dinos and, you know, have a bunch of tames just kind of fitting in, in and around. And of course, I couldn't do this without bringing you a fantastic montage oh yeah look at that ah oh, crap I stuffed it up hold on give me two seconds I just need to remove this and we can fix it Okay, yes, yeah, so our base is fully finished. Well, kinda, it's just bigger. We might add some stuff onto it later. It's time we get serious with some flak armor. Like we said earlier, the goals are to be able to defeat the bosses of this map. I just need to know what I need to be able to summon them in. Looks like we need to get all the artifacts of this island. 
which means we're gonna have to do a lot of cave runs. And from what I know, the best creature to run caves in is the Thylacolio. And in the middle of Redwoods, we found this level 105, which should do the job, I hope. There was just one little problem that happened when trying to tame this beast. I left the gate open of our trap. So once I dunked him in there, he, he it, uh, it kind of ran out and I'd left the gate open of our base. And he ran straight into there and started fighting everything inside. I was freaking out. I was so scared that this thing was going to destroy all of my dinos. Oh, freak. Get this thing out. Get this thing out. Get out. Can I pick him? No, I picked another dude. No. Oh, I... uh... okay, 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 okay. Go back. Go back. Violet Colio, where you at? Come here, punk. Oh, I'm stuck. Can I pick you up? All right. No, I got the beaver. Yeah, got him. Got him. No, I don't got him. Oh, the beaver messed you up. Hey, you stupid cat. Well, since I failed taming the thylacolio, I knew I wouldn't fail making electricity. Yeah, I made this so I could have a refrigerator to keep my meat cold. Yeah, we love cold meat. But also, most importantly, light. Because this kind of place gets really dark in ASA. It's a really cool feature that the lighting works, like, crazily, but... I don't know, I suppose you need light more here. Day 26 and we're heading back to the Redwoods. We really need to get ourselves a thylacolio so we can start hitting some caves. We searched through the Redwoods for the entire damn day and came up pretty much empty handed. We found a random RG egg though. So that's a win I suppose. Day 27, we spotted a level 80 thylacolio. And after searching around the area, this was the highest level that we could find. So we're gonna have to make do with this. It took me a moment to remember the only way to feed these guys was with some cooked meat. Luckily, I had some cooked lamb chops lying around from a drop that we found earlier. I then took this gray kitty cat out for a little bit of a stroll around the area. And as luck would have it, we bumped into this level 150 trike. Level 150s are kind of rare, so I had to tame this horny beast. Getting it stuck in the trap was uh, a little bit trickier than I thought it was going to be. Come here, trike. Come here. Ha ha ha. Too easy, mate. Too easy, mate. Now just going to jump out and we're good. Day 28, I went out and found an oviraptor. So I snatched it. I want to start breeding some of my dinos, and apparently oviraptors can help with this in ASA. I realized soon enough that it probably wouldn't fit in my trap, so we're going to have to try and knock it out inside my actual base. Hopefully they're not aggressive. Putting this little peewee to sleep wasn't too difficult, but then I remembered they have to eat eggs to be able to tame. Problem is, I only had one RG egg, so I'm not sure if this is going to work. It didn't 100% tame, so we're going to have to try and figure out another way to do this. I do have two trikes, so maybe forcing them to breed might work. I shoved this trike egg down this oviraptor's throat, and uh, no, nah, didn't work. Didn't work at all. So close, but yet so far. I'm going to need an oviraptor eventually, so then I'm going to probably need some eggs. And there's one tame that gives you lots of eggs quite easily. The dodo. I just tamed up a baby one, waited for it to grow, picked it up, and jumped on my thylacolia and took it straight home. Except on the way back home, we had this baryonyx chase us. Basically the entire way. So I just let it into our trap. And before my thylacolio dying, escaped while locking it in and put this baryonyx to sleep. Baryonyx is a great underwater tames, as well as pretty decent cave tames too. The only pain in the butt thing about them is they're piscivores, so they only eat fish meat. So in order to go get it some food, I went and took on some megalodons for a mass amount of fish that it would give us. This also gave this high level baryonyx a bunch of levels. Oh, and that oviraptor? I killed it. It's pretty useless to us right now. Day 30, whilst I was floating around the swamp, I spotted this level 145 frog. Now, I can't miss an opportunity to tame one of these guys as they're really good for killing bugs and collecting cementing paste from them. And honestly, later on in the video, this thing becomes a lifesaver. Once tamed, I named this slimy little amphibian Kermit. You know, like Kermit the frog might be an age thing, but I'm pretty sure people know who Kermit is. I then flew back to the Redwoods, again hoping to try and get ourselves a decent thylacolio. That level 81 ain't going to cut it. And did I find one? No, no I didn't. I ended up stealing a level 145 baby stego. Again, if I get the opportunity to tame a really high level creature, I'm gonna take it. And stealing babies is just, just so easy. I understand why Uncle Jeffrey did all those things. On the 31st day of this adventure, I aimed down the sights of my crossbow and shot this thylacolio down from its perch. Even though it was quite angry, I went and picked it up. Why? Because it's level 145. Finally spotting such a decent big cat like this. Ah, it was such a good moment. And shooting this in the face with the bright blue sky just above us. Ah, what a scenic sight this is. No, oh, it's so peaceful when it's sleeping. I mean, it's kind of scary though, but it's peaceful. It didn't tame until day 32 though. And of course, I immediately took it out to go see what kind of damage we had and get it a bunch of levels so we could prepare for our first cave. We arrived at the South Cave. I jumped on the back of the Stylocolio and then took off into this cave. As we traversed deeper into this cave, I realized Stylocolios can't actually fit all the way through. 
Dude, no way. We, we can't get in. Well, I really do need to do this cave, so we're going to just try it on foot. After all, I am a very skilled arc veteran. Oh, I swear there's usually spiders and stuff in here. Where are the oh, holy crap, they just spawned right in front of me. Die, please. Die, please. Pretty please. No, no. This is, this is the way we're going to go out, huh? Yeah, so, um, mm, yeah, uh, well, that, yeah, that happened. Day 33, I went back to retrieve my Argy and my Thylacolio. That was quite the failed mission, but we're going to have to go back, regroup, and rethink our strategy now for these caves. I think the shotgun's going to have to be a main weapon of ours, but I don't know if a prim shotgun's going to cut it. It'll have to do for now because we're kind of running out of time to be able to defeat this challenge. Remember, we have 100 days to be able to beat the entire island. I returned back to this cave only wearing prim flak, with a prim shotgun and a primitive crossbow with unlimited grapples. Thanks to the weird spawning mechanics, I was able to get my gear back and there was no creatures around. Then I immediately grappled straight up into the roof. Then they all spawned straight in. From here, I was able to shoot these spiders dead. Then continued on to the next part of this cave where I was met with a bunch of other creatures. But this is also when I realized my ammo is starting to get quite low. We're so close to the artifact room, I can almost taste it. Grappled up to some height again and started raining hellfire down on these ugly creatures, which is going well until I completely ran out of ammo and was only left with trank arrows. That was also doing very little damage to these high health creatures. And with that realization, I had to take the L and just leave this cave. We're gonna have to come back with a bunch more ammo, but we know it's pretty much doable on foot. Day 35 and we only have one thing on our mind, ammunition. I took my Anki all the way up to Metal Mountain in the middle of Redwoods to go and mine some metal. Day 36, we took our Baryonyx straight into the ocean. Basically, I'm here looking for some silica pearls, but either they don't spawn here anymore or I'm just blind and stupid and can't see them. Like we spent this entire day looking for silica pearls and I could only get some from some poor little trilobites. Day 37, we took flight to a place that I know there's silica pearls. Over here in the snowish ice kind of area. All right, so typically there's silica pearls around here. I'm, I'm sure of it. But again, even with my scuba gear on and my goggles on, I, I couldn't see freaking any silica pearls. Well, that was until I found some in the shallows here, I guess. Oh, is that? Oh, silica pearls. We got some. Yeah, that's good, I guess. As I was flying around on top, I thought this is a silica pearl. Nope, it's a Pallovia. Still on the hunt for silica pearls, we went over to this iceberg and dove into the water just below it. Because surely there's going to be a bunch of silica pearls around here somewhere, and I'm pretty sure there's a silica pearl cave around here. This little adventure was going so good until this happened. Oh crap, electric eels. Oh, fuck. oh no! No! No, it's a Tuso! No! Oh, bro. Day 38, I flew back over to go get my PT. Without being at a level movement speed, flying feels like it takes forever. I was able to find a bunch of silica pearls on the land here, and I'm super grateful that they're not Pelovias this time. It's day 39 and we're still looking for silica pearls. Remember, I basically lost most of them when I got killed by that Alpha Tuso. And now I'm pretty sure I have a decent understanding of what those silica pearls look like. I just wish they glowed like they used to. After I arrived back at base, I took my frog over to the swamp so we could do some leveling. Frogs are great to go around in the swamp until this happens. Oh crap, I just saw that at the last second. Ah, oh, Capro's the bane of my existence. Won't lie, a little bit easier than I expected. Thank you, Froggy. Day 40 and I'm having way too much fun on this frog. I'm not sure if I mentioned, but we named this frog Kermit. You know, like Kermit the frog. I, I don't know if you're too like, young or old. Is Kermit still around? After a fun run in the swamp, we came home and made ourselves a chemistry bench. Really hoping that this will be a mass gunpowder producer. Now, even though we have really important goals, if I have a chance to mess with somebody, I will. Oh, is that you? Bruh. What are you, brother? That scared the f out of me. <laughs> Bro, you better not drop me, G. <laughs> day 41 was an exciting day. We smacked some rocks with our Anki and mined some oil with our pickaxe. Oh, yeah, absolutely thrilling. Yes, we farmed that entire day. Also, we could build this. The Industrial Forge. Remember, I just want tons of ammo so I can run these caves and shoot things, you know, dead it's now day 43 and time for us to finally venture back into this cave this time with kermit at our hands and able to fit through the gaps this should be successful i hope oh here we go the big fight oh i took our armor already hey we won the fight but it, it, they ruined my all my armor 
My mom is gone. After killing a bunch more groups of bugs and mobs and repetitively healing up my dino with just feeding it raw meat, we made it to the entrance to the room of where the artifact was held. But once again, my frog couldn't make it all the way through. I was stuck. We can't get through. I'm going to have to do it on foot. Uh, please, nothing scary, crazy in here. Oh, crap. Scary, crazy things in here. The scary, crazy things, we kited them out, shot them, killed them, and then I was able to go and retrieve our reward the artifact now usually we would just leave this place peacefully and calmly but no i couldn't i wanted to see if we could find some cave drops and because i'm a complete idiot this ended up being riskier and stupider than i thought it was going to be oh crap oh crap no 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 frog's proper dying now did i get directly out no there was a cave drop that i really wanted and it turned out to be a pretty crappy cave drop by the time we left this cave it was already midway through day 44 yeah caves take a long time since we almost lost our best frog, I went back to the swamp area on my RG to go see if we can find a mate and then start breeding frogs. So, you know, essentially, if we lose one, we can replace it easily. This isn't a frog, but it's pretty cool. I've not seen one in game before. You know, these things, the sky lobsters, I can't say what they're really called, the runny or well, whatever. Day 45, and we still haven't had any luck finding a damn frog that's a decent enough level that can breed with my current Kermit. So instead, I went home and started uh, placing down some air cons because it gets hot in here. No, not really. I just wanted to start breeding something that I can breed right now. Yeah, I want to try fight the bosses with some trikes. Crazy idea, yes, but let's just try it. They all hatched really quickly and then started growing really quickly too. Yes, my breeding rates are really high, but in order to be able to defeat this challenge in 100 days realistically, I need to be able to breed fast. The only problem is, some of these trikes suck. So, there was only one choice left for us to do. Day 46 and we find ourselves in the ocean once again. Why are we here? Well, I don't remember. But through this little side quest adventure, we were attacked by the rarest creature in Ark, the Lapluridon. Now on my first ever Ark 100 days, I encountered one of these and I didn't know what they were, so I killed it. But this time I know how rare they are and how good they are as tames. So you know what I did? Absolutely nothing. The thing just disappeared once it done its whirly pool thingy. Day 47, we spent this entire day fishing. Yes, I know it might be strange, but I really want some decent gear. And I know fishing can sometimes give you some decent blueprints. We didn't really get anything great. I mean, that compound bow is good, but not right now. Day 48. No, we do not have any special gear, but we do have Kermit and an optimistic attitude. Did I breed Kermit with anyone else? No, I haven't. So yeah, th this is a little bit silly, but I get sidetracked and a little bit uh, distracted sometimes. So yeah, we're running a cave. What could possibly go wrong? We were stripped naked early on by these weird centipedes. They kind of like Herbert the pervert from Family Guy. But all in all, thanks to Kermit, this cave was rather easy. And just like that, we secured our second artifact. Day 49, and we have to put these artifacts on display. Having two of them on lock looks good, but once we have them all spread around our little veranda here, it's going to look good. Then I picked up my thylacolio and flew on over to another cave. This is that scary lava cave, so I made sure to put down some sleeping bags just in case. But guess what? My thylacolio has been eating too much meat and it's too fat to fit through this hole. It took us long enough to fly here, so let's see if we can attempt to do this on foot. I have the unlimited grapple hooks mod on, so this might help us get through. I'm just going to have to try and Spider-Man my way through this and try and get through all the creatures without dying. With dangerous lava surrounding us, we made it super close to the artifact. But then, yes, uh, my skills kind of did not prevail in this instance. Yeah, day 50 ended up just flying all the way home. I was definitely very ill-prepared for this cave. Frustrated, I had the urge to kill something. And nothing better to kill than an Alpha Raptor that's really close to your base. I don't really know why we're doing so much damage to it compared to other dinos, but I'll take it. Yo, Mastercraft pickaxe? Yes! Even though I haven't got a lot of gear that I'm really after, we've been collecting a few things along the way. That's why I crafted this vault, that we can keep all of our goodies safe and locked and, you know, have enough space to keep it really. Day 51, we spend the day fishing. Again, I'm determined to get some decent gear from fishing. It's gotta happen. In this particular case, it didn't happen. With no luck fishing, we went out to go find another water type creature. The humble amphibian frog. This one's only a level 105, but it should do. And if we do enough breeding, we should be able to make a decent decent frog side note a cool little breeding mechanic with the frogs is that you have to breed them underwater and these are their eggs and once they hatch they turn into tadpoles which is it's pretty cool day 53 and it's all about that baby making i'm trying to breed dinos with decent stats and dude aren't baby tracks kind of super cute unlike frogs they're ugly no matter what sorry day 54 and we finally have a decent stat bezel buffer of our own what the hell dude <laughs> yeah take that sucker Come in and mess with me and my boys. Stupid Therizino. I yeeted. <laughs> this Beezle Buffer I plan on taking through the caves. But it's probably important to go get it some pretty easy levels first. 
I'm impatient. We didn't get a lot of levels, so we're just gonna go hit this cave. And we're gonna hit up the swamp cave. I don't have a gas mask currently, so I put on a full scuba suit. You can use this as an alternative to a gas mask, but it comes with one problem. If you run into these big centipede alpha plura thingies and they spit on you, they basically destroy your suit. And in this cave, if you don't have any protection, you can pretty much die from like the poison gases. So yeah, we made sure to get the hell out of there as quick as we could. Slightly defeated from that trip, we made our way back to base. Now we're gonna have to come up with another plan. And that's when it hit me. To execute this plan, we need to go into the ocean. The big, bad, scary ocean full of creatures that just wanna absolutely murder you and, you know, eat you for dinner. Yes, we are here to find ourselves some black pearls. Hopefully we'll find a Tuso that we can absolutely munch on and have some nice calamari. Or even better, these wannabe lobsters. Because yes, once you kill them, they drop you black pearls. Now we don't need a lot, we just need enough to be able to craft ourselves. Yes, you guessed it, you might have worked it out now. A gas mask. Day 56, it's time for us to return to the Redwoods Cave. This time armed with a shotgun and a gas mask. Oh, and uh, naked. That. Yeah, apparently if you go in with just wearing the gas mask, like the alpha pluris can't shoot off just the gas mask but if you're wearing armor it'll shoot the gas mask and all your armor off weird game mechanic i know but hey it is what it is now you're probably thinking why would i skip ahead to this cave it's a little bit harder than other caves this is why for cave drops even though this particular cave drop sucks this cave alone usually holds a bunch of cave drops that are pretty decent there's usually a bunch of red cave drops in there this one wasn't too bad an ascendant sniper rifle that's a win but of course, ultimately, we were here for the artifact. You know when you pick up the artifact and then you start making your way outside the cave, thinking it's going to be nice and safe and chill? Well, this particular case, it wasn't chill. Holy crap, that's a lot of dragonflies. Oh, look at all those damage numbers. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm dying. Oh, no. No, my frog's dying. My, frog, my frog's dead. My frog's dead. Holy crap. We're going to have to Spider-Man our way out of the spidery cave kind of ironic but we're just gonna have to do it run thanks for some epic skills taught to me from the old peter parker we made our way out of this cave safely unfortunately without a frog though but that's okay we can replace it by making kermit have some lovey lovey time i try not to get too emotionally attached to some of these dinos because i suck at this game they all um yeah they die a lot day 58 was a pretty chill day i started the day off just by leveling up our new frog then flew off towards the volcano towards the snow area in hopes to find ourselves a decent tame something a little bit stronger for some of these caves that will be coming up later although not a cave dino the daydon can be a pretty decent tame and this level 140 is pretty hard to pass up it's just such a mission to fly from one place to another on this rg it's so damn slow i encountered a slight problem when i was trying to tame this daydon for some strange reason its food wasn't dropping so it wouldn't eat it's a freaking daydon that's all they do is eat it had been a little while in game so it should have tamed by now i decided to go on a little bit of a trip to see if we can find another tame hoping that the daydon would starve out i came back empty-handed and nothing had changed with this date on. I don't know if the game's bugged or my settings are wrong. I'm gonna have to figure that out. If you know what happened here, let me know in the comments below. Day 60 and this stupid Pumba just won't tame. I had basically given up at this point. I'm just gonna have to move on with my life. Good news though, once we went out exploring again, we managed to spot a level 145 Sabertooth. And this should in theory be a very good cave dino. They have a strong attack and they're small enough to fit through some of the gaps, I think. I just gotta spend five freaking hours trying to fly back to base. That was a slight exaggeration, but it takes ages, okay? 100 days challenge like this where time is limited, it would have been nice to be able to fly around the map a little quicker than we can. Day 61, yes, we do have the Sabertooth in our trap, but we also have that big pig thing that I forgot about. We managed to knock out the Sabertooth without any dramas, and I figured I'd have another crack at this date on. And yes, once again, the food wasn't draining, so we couldn't tame it. I went ahead and named this Sabertooth Leo. It was just the first name that came to my head. You know, like Leo is in lion, as in Sabertooth's probably like an old ancestor of the lion. Same old routine with the Sabertooth. Quickly went to the swamp to go get it some easy levels and then started flying it straight to the next cave. But on the way over to this cave, I found a yellow drop with a ring around it. Wasn't great, but we got a flak helmet out of it. So uh, that's a, you know, yay. And as luck would have it, only a little bit away, there was another yellow drop with a ring around it. The only problem is we had to wait for it to fall. A little bit of Mastercraft gear. That's pretty good. I'll take that. Then we finally made it to the entrance of this cave. Little disclaimer, I'd been watching a lot of Ross Clark's videos recently and I watched him run this cave naked and I'm awesome. So I figured I could do this too. A little less awesome. I, I did bring some flak armor. I had my parachutes and grapple hooks to use that to help me maneuver around this cave. Back in my old PVP official days, I have lived in this cave before. So I'm quite familiar on how to get around. Then I made it all the way to the place that the artifact is held. Dropped down, grabbed it and was immediately surrounded by a bunch of bats. Fighting for my life to try and escape, I grabbed Apple hooked my way out only to discover that I was completely huh? naked and about to die. I looked behind me and then all the bats were chasing. Could I make it out of this one alive? 
No, no, I couldn't. Okay, let's try this one again, but this time the more sensible way. No, I don't have any armor, but I'm hoping my saber tooth will protect me for most of this journey. I went down to the first little lot of enemies and attacked them. I kind of forgot that some of these enemies are a lot higher level and in caves than they are out in... Well, not in caves. And that these bats are particularly brutal. So there's a lot of times that I just have to stand still and force feed Leo. Since I have Leo here, I wanted to make sure that I can run this cave a little bit sensibly and patiently. I don't want to just charge on through like I did earlier naked. Although we are running out of time. Doing 20 minute days in this run through is making this time crunch quite hard. We finally made it back to just where the artifact is held. And I have to leap over this lava. Don't stuff this up. Oh, looks like we've gone too far. Oh, we made it. All right, jump, 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 jump. Ah, we're good. We're good, we're good. We've got no dangers around. Yeah, good. We secured the artifact once again, but now we have to make our way out of this cave alive. Remember how I said it's pretty easy to stuff up this jump? Well, uh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Oh, bro, bro. Now I really have no choice but to run this completely naked. It's a little bit cheesy and cheaty, but I placed down some foundations inside the cave, hoping that if I had to run this again, they're definitely not going to spawn again. Fortunately, we cleared most of the way and only a few creatures spawned back in, but they were pretty easy to run past. I managed to secure the artifact once again, and we made it all the way back outside the cave to our Argy. Our artifact collection is starting to look good. We have three out of 10 of the artifacts that we need. And it's already day 64. We're kind of running out of time. We need to get our butts in the gear. Did you know if you repetitively do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result? Then that's the definition of insanity. Stop it. Get some help. Yeah, I'm really sick of this freaking pig. I decided to kill it in the end. You don't want to join me? You die. Day 65 and we're back on our baryonyx. This time, yes, hitting up another cave because time is running out. This deep underwater cave is aptly named the Caverns of Lost Faith. Interesting name. And yes, it is a kind of scary cave because, well, underwater stuff is just scary in, in itself. But once we open up this red drop here, we scored a stupidly valuable blueprint. An Ascendant Trike Saddle Blueprint. This is massive. Have I ever mentioned how much I hate jellyfish? It's such a pain in the ass. In my opinion, the Baryonyx is probably the best tame for this cave, as there's a lot of underwater sections and some land sections too. But easily, the biggest pest in this cave is definitely the eels. I continued on through this cave, trying my best to, you know, stay alive, and finally made it to the end little pool here that holds the artifact. It also holds a bunch of electric eels. And the, the, they suck. They suck so bad that they almost killed me. So I straight up noped this situation and went back up to the safety of the land. And the only way to heal up my baryonyx right now is to force feed it a bunch of fish. Shoving all this food down this baryonyx throat took us quite a long time. Once we got it up enough that I felt comfortable going back into the water, well, we're back in the water. And I was able to secure the next artifact. Now we just have to make it out of this cave alive, which is always easier said than done. As I was on my way out though, I spotted another drop along the ways. And if you know me, I'm a fiend for some good drops. This one was pretty interesting. I'll take an Ascendant Assault Rifle. Could be handy for something. We swam all the way through this cave and then saw the light at the end of this tunnel. We made it out alive and were able to secure the next artifact. Day 67 and we're taking a slight break from caving. Today, we're murdering helpless penguins and collecting more drops. Again, we need some decent gear for this end game. That yellow drop in the distance had my name on it. Well, that was until I looked to my right and saw a red drop. So yes, of course, I had to go for that one. Except it was protected by an alpha raptor. If you notice here, my RG's doing a crazy amount of damage. That's because I had all my settings messed up and wrong. Setting up nitrato servers can be kind of confusing. I end up fixing this later on in the video. Oh, and if you're wondering what we got in the drop, yeah, that's it. It was pretty decent. Day 68, I crafted myself up a complete ghillie suit. Because who doesn't love role-playing as a bush? Well, but really, I, I made this ghillie suit so I could go and try and harvest some honey. Except Microraptors wouldn't let me get to the honey. Eventually, I made it to the honey. In theory, the ghillie suit was supposed to help me not get attacked by the bees. But I, I ended up getting attacked by the bees. I don't know how this freaking thing works. You're probably wondering, what's the deal with the honey? Why do you want it? Well, that's quite simple. It's better bait for fishing. Yes fishing i am determined to get decent gear from fishing because i was streaming at time the chat told me to go to different locations because 
there'll probably be better fish there to catch. Oh, and my Twitch chat told me to name this Thylacolio Mr. Honeybait. Yeah, it, it's uh, unique and I suppose appropriate for what we're doing. We settled on this place near the Redwoods because it had some saber-toothed salmon in there. And apparently they give you better loot. Except we only caught a piranha and it only gave us some trash stuff. Since fishing wasn't really working, we went back to the swamp cave. But also because I'm completely stupid, I was fully clothed. Which means, yes, once an Arthur Pleura hits you with a full set of clothes on, it destroys your gas mask as well. So yeah, th that was the end of that trip. Day 71, I ventured back into the swamp cave. This cave is one of the easiest caves that has some of the best loot drops. You see, like this one, we got an Ascendant Flak Helmet. And in order to tackle some of the harder caves later on, we're going to need some of the best gear we could possibly get. And we're going to need some decent saddles for some of these bosses. Day 72, and I have one purpose today. I am here to murder this T-Rex. Or basically so I could steal its baby. Kidnapping babies in ASA is a great little addition, but uh, morally, it's a, it's a little weird. I went up to it and said, hey, I just killed your parents. Then it became my best friend, so I named it Arthur. Day 73, and I've got my heart set on killing one of those sky lobster bugs. Thing is, to tame them, it's quite quite a process. First I have to find a male and then kill it, which is somewhat easy because they're kind of weak, but they're just kind of awkward to fight. And once you finally kill it, you get one of these things, the Rhinio Ganatha thingy pheromone, which we're going to put in the fridge for a little bit. We need to find a female Sky Lobster first before we can use it. Day 74 and little old orphaned Arthur is fully grown up. And because he's a little bit lonely and loves long walks on the beach, well, we did exactly that. Well, that was until I got bored. I'm the boss here, so, you know, long walks on the beach are kind of boring. But flying in the sky is kind of fun for a little bit, kind of. Yes, we're on the hunt for a female sky lobster, and it's taking a long time. Like, really, really long time. I ended up finding one, but it was uh, the wrong gender. And unfortunately, in Ark, you can't choose your gender, so I had to kill it. I really want the Sky Lobster because I'd rather take my Baryonyx into some of these caves. And having the Sky Lobster means I can carry the Baryonyx wherever I'd like on the map. But we're running out of time to complete this 100 days challenge. And I really need to hit these caves and I don't have much opportunities to fail them. If I don't complete them first go and my dinosaurs die, we might not have enough time to complete this whole challenge. Which makes this little predicament kind of sucky. My Thylacolio doesn't fit in this cave. That's okay though, because there is a certain cave on this map that the Thylacolio definitely fits in. The one way up north on Kano Island. It was a little tight in the first part of this cave, but we did manage to get through. After making our way through this waterous cavern, we were then greeted by our first lot of enemies. And then we made our way out to meet some more enemies, particularly bats. Bats are really annoying. It can be a little tricky maneuvering around this little uh, cave here, but thankfully the Thylacolio has some reduced fall damage, which means making it to the artifact area was quite easy. And there we have it. We have now secured the next artifact. You used to be able to just climb up the walls on Thylacolios to get out of this cave, but with ASA's new graphics system and all of its kind of rocks and stuff, uh, yeah, this was near impossible. By the end of the day, we made it out alive with a new artifact in hand. Day 77, on our way back to base, we found a yellow drop with a ring around it, and we scored some pretty decent saddles from it. But right near my base, there was an Alpha Kano. So I took my Thylacolio out to try and kill it, but then I had a light bulb idea. This would be a really good opportunity to give my Baryonyx some really good levels, as I'm planning on using the Baryonyx for a lot of caving and possibly the boss fights. Oh, and we placed the artifact in its holder. Day 78, and I'm on a mission. Yes, we finally found a female Sky Lobster. And I'm trying to get this Rex to get impregnated by this big Sky Lobster. Consensually, of course. You gotta get the Sky Lobster down to under 10% of its health, and then it'll impregnate on a big dinosaur. The dinosaur has to be like a Rex or bigger. Once its health is down, it'll do this animation. And the Rex is fully impregnated. It's a shame. Lobsters don't last long. Now, to get extra levels on your Sky Lobster, you've got to feed the Rex its cravings. Unfortunately, this stupid Sky Lobster wants exceptional kibble, and I don't have the means to make that. Oh, and I kind of forgot to tell my Rex that it's going to die when the Sky Lobster's born. Well, anyway, in honor of Arthur dying, we then went ahead and named this Sky Lobster Arthur, but spelt a little different. It's now day 79, and yes, our Sky Lobster's fully grown, but its levels kind of suck. Now, I do know that they can pick up large dinos, just not Brontos, as you can see now. But with Arthur here, I went out to the swamp area because I wanted to try and find a mate for our Baryonyx. It just requires a lot of rest because its stamina sucks. I do wish we had a higher level Sky Lobster, but this is going to have to do. We're only going to use it to be able to like maneuver around the map with larger dinos. Day 80, and we found this level 135 Baryonyx. The only thing is, it's a female, so it's not a good mate, but it's a 135, so I figured I'd take it anyway. I flew it back to my base, dropped it into our trap, and waited for it to go to sleep. 
Okay, now we really need a stud male to breed with. But one of the things I found so difficult in this 100 days challenge was searching for dinos that were decent enough to tame. In the end, I found this level 75 male baryonyx. Yes, it is a low level, but I'm kind of hoping I can do some creative breeding and, you know, it won't matter in the future. Once our new baryonyxes were fully tamed, we placed them together and started the process of making love. And here is our first egg from our baryonyxes. And damn, this baryonyx is kind of cute for an ugly little thing. It's a shame though, because it's not really the level that we're after so um close your eyes kids no day 82 i went for a little bit of a fly around on an overgrown pigeon and you'll never believe what we came across that's a unicorn yes a unicorn with a baby unicorn with it now i'm a lazy tamer so uh yeah i, I killed the mum. also i could kidnap its baby and take it back to my lonely island and i took a moment to get a pretty cool action shot I haven't a clue what I'm going to do with this unicorn, but it's a pretty cool addition to our family. Anyways, I'm back out on my RG looking to locate one of these, the Oviraptor. This time I have some eggs laying around, so there's a good chance I will be able to tame this. It can sometimes be a little tricky knocking these things out though. Luckily, I have an ascendant crossbow that basically did it in one shot and a bunch of unfertilized eggs to be able to tame it. And after this successful test, the Oviraptor passively picks up the eggs and stops them from spoiling. Day 83 and we hatched another Baryonyx. This time a much better level, so we kept it alive. Then I picked up my frog and went back to the redwoods cave yes i'm trying to farm the drops i really need to get myself a decent weapon or some better armor so i can do the caves later on problem is i've done this cave so many times i was being a little bit overconfident so when i jumped off my frog to go and fetch this drop i got attacked by leeches what do you mean i can't get back on the frog get on get on get on oh i'm no the leeches are freaking killing me oh man day 84 and i kind of gave up hope on that uh little adventure back in the cave instead i'm flying to a much safer location the top of the volcano basically i'm only here to collect as much resources as possible that i can gather from around here mainly looking for obsidian and metal but hey there's a lot of crystal around and i need it i guess I'm wanting to make myself an industrial cooker so I can brew up a bunch of health potions. The problem is, it requires a ton of polymer, thus needing the obsidian. Day 85, and we're waiting for the polymer to cook up in our fabricator. So I took my baryonyx out to go test out my new gun. I have an ascendant assault rifle. Ooh wee! We just murked that spino with our freaking assault rifle. After all the fun was had with our assault rifle, we had enough materials to be able to make ourselves an industrial cooker. I placed it down in our little crafting area and put it to work, making us a ton of health potions. Day 86, and we're seriously starting to run out of time to finish this 100 days challenge. And we still have a few caves that we need to hit and collect those artifacts. I do know from previous experiences that this cave can be kind of interesting. I'm just hoping my baryonyx can feel all the way through it. Ooh. I think we hit our first roadblock. Uh, will we fit through? Oh, we're good. Okay, uh, this is a problem. How do we get around this tree? Oh, I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit. If I angle this correctly, I should be able to jump. Oh, yes, ah, we made it, we made it. Maneuvering around this cave is one thing. Then we have to deal with the pests that come with it. In this particular cave, we were met with a bunch of dead ends and was soon led to a place that the Baryonyx couldn't get through. Oh, can you fit? No, oh, um, can we squeeze? No. Damn. Yes, damn indeed. With that, we were only left with one choice. Here he goes, nothing. Jump. Oh, oh, we hit something. Maybe I don't. Oh, okay. Lucky. Still alive. Go down. Oh, there goes the armor. Great. We made it to the bottom of this chasm and then cleared out all the local pests and continued on further until we came up to this area that I wasn't confident that my baryonyx would make it over. Instead, we kind of fell all the way down into the water. Well, that was until I missed and hit the tree and yeah, my baryonyx took some damage. That, that, was, that was dumb. I didn't have a lot of choice. I had to follow the water all the way into this dark and scary little hole, which was really a trap because yes, as soon as I got stuck in that little hole there, we were attacked by a million different creatures. And once we got free, we came into this room where we were met with more pests and stuff that needed to die. I had to make sure that everything in this area was dead. Why you might ask? Well, that's simple. I was going to have to leave my baryonyx behind because to get to the artifact, I needed to grapple up to this area and make my way through on foot. And now we have secured the next artifact we just now have to make our way out of this cave which is a lot easier said than done because we were quickly met with our old nemesis that gap that we couldn't get through earlier yeah we're completely stuck here now because we jumped down into places and uh i didn't really think about getting back out i was really left with no other option i'm sorry mr baryonyx but i'm gonna have to leave you behind 
Equipped with only the pants around my waist and an ascendant assault rifle, I quickly made my way out of this cave and safely home. We're so close yet so far from collecting all the artifacts and fighting all the bosses. Let's see if we can make it. Day 88 and I'm not wasting any time. It's time to hit up the next cave. This one's relatively easy if you know what you're doing. I'm doing it on foot because I actually don't know if you can take a dino in here at all. I'm making sure I'm being very cautious and only attacking what dinos I can see and easily kill, which is quite a lot of them. And in some moments, this overpowered assault rifle is isn't so overpowered that's why i'm extremely grateful that this cave is quite easy now typically you take grapple hooks so you can jump down there and grab the artifact but if you go prone you can just kind of crawl over and yoink it i'm gonna crawl over and yoink this baby yoinked and just like that, we have secured 8 out of the 10 artifacts. Day 89, and I'm really kicking things into gear. Am I ready? I don't know. Let's find out. Yes, now we're doing the hard underwater cave. Welcome to the Caverns of Lost Hope. And do we lose hope in this place? Yes. Yes, we do. Right at the entrance, we're met by extremely high-level Megalodons, which I managed to slay easily. But then came my worst enemies, the Electric Eels. My Baryonyx was holding up pretty well, and we were slaying some of these long, slimy, disgusting creatures. I tried to make our escape, but their electric abilities destroyed my Baryonyx. I couldn't escape. It was the end for us. We literally have 11 days left to complete this challenge, and there's only really one dino I know I could easily get that can hold up against those electric eels. Yes, the Basilosaurus. Please be a decent level, please be a decent level. And thank the Ark Gods, this was a decent level. But because these guys are a passive team, and they take quite a while to starve out, it was day 90 by the time we tamed it. I led this Bassy all the way back to my base, well, as close as my base as I could get it to, just so I could drop off my Baryonyx and get all the gear required to go to the cave again. And I also had an Ascendant Saddle for it that I picked up in one of the caves earlier the only issue is we're actually quite a while away from where the cave actually is and we're gonna have to swim all the way around since we don't have cryopods or anything of that like but on the good side this gives us an opportunity to get a bunch of levels for our bassy by killing basically anything we can on the way i see you down there weird leech this whale thing day 91 with my newly acquired basilosaurus i started to make this long and tedious journey to the cave i also made sure to kill as many things as possible along the way again to try and get as many levels as possible before entering this really hard cave after a long journey we finally made it to the mouth of this cave time is not on our side so i raced straight in and started getting on the attack of course we were attacked by eels but they don't do anything to basilos there are a few scary moments when we were attacked by a horde of crazy underwater creatures but because we did a lot of leveling on the way to this cave we were able to defeat most of these guys this cave is really quite short to get to the artifact but you just have to deal with so many creatures and if you don't know where you're going or what to look for you'll probably miss this little hole here i call it the cat's bum hole because yes this is what leads you through to the artifact room it's just around this corner here we just have to deal with yet again a ton of creatures at first we were only having to fight one or two and then i noticed there was an alpha megalodon amongst this whole pack of sharks i knew it was gonna get sticky now i don't think i'm gonna make it through this one our basilo's health is dropping fast yes it died. I myself tried to make a swim for it, but didn't survive. This really screws us. With nine days left to complete this challenge and two artifacts that we need to get still, I have no idea if we're going to complete this challenge. But does that mean I'm going to give up? Hell no. We did just prove though that I really need a Basilosaurus in order to do that cave. So we're going to go out to the water and hope that we can find another one. And I tell you what, the Ark Gods are favoring us today. It's even a level 150. To give it some main character energy, we named it Free Willy. Then I quickly ran back to base so I could craft up all the essentials and get myself a saddle for this Basilosaurus and went back down to the beach. But this time, I wasn't going to do this trip alone. I needed to guarantee that I could get this artifact. So I invited my boy here, Fang, along. Hello there. Again, stopping along the way so we can get some pretty easy levels from some of these creatures, like this wannabe sperm whale. Together, we made it to the entrance of this cave. And just like before, we were met with a bunch of underwater creatures that dealt a ton of damage. I had been playing around with the settings, and I made these rates a little bit closer to what official rates are. So, we both got kind of wrecked. But we didn't die, and that's the most important part. We made it somewhat safely to the cat's bum hole, and ventured our way through to the end. And I don't know how this game damn works, but once we got to the end, there wasn't that many creatures here. And I was able to secure the next artifact fact and i remembered i had my sky lobster over here from earlier when we brought the baryonyx over and with this we were able to get ourselves home so fang hasn't really played much arc before and doesn't know about some of the mechanics you jump on. Oh, i can jump on too mm -hmm. what this is sick i didn't know it was two seater oh this is cool as and just like that, we had 9 out of 10 artifacts. 5 days left to go in this challenge, 1 cave, 3 bosses. Can we complete it? I have no idea. Purely because we're on a bit of a time crunch, I requested Fang's help once again for the very last cave. 
if you haven't guessed, yes, the hard snow cave is what we have left. The darn thing is, because we had to get our baryonyxes all the way over here, it took us a long ass time to get here. It's now day 96 and we're only just entering this cave. And because I kind of suck at this game and Fang is inexperienced, I knew we were going to take this cave quite slowly. I wanted to try out a little bit of a strategy. I wanted to place these spikes down and let the dinos run into them and they can die. But uh, yeah, cave building is uh, not enabled on the server right now. Instead, we had to rely on their stupidness and shoot them from up here this is arc survival ascended and the dino pathing is significantly better than it ever was so yeah they found us and, and and tried to murder us this cave is pretty chill but it does come with one big pest pelovias oh yeah fuck, i saw that one too it's moments like this that i'm glad i'm not alone in this cave myself and fang were fighting off these bears but they started murking us oh crap just run bro just run 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 let's get out of here our baryonyx has almost died and with that, in order to complete this cave, we were left with one choice. To leave these baryonyxes behind and run this cave on foot. We had grapples and parachutes, so that was kind of going to be our way to get through this cave, hopefully without dying. Since there's no bats or any flyers down here, maybe we could do this? Oh, I think we gotta go down. Yep, we do. Oh, you Come on, wake up, wake up, wake up. Four, three. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Oh, they're coming after me. Nah, I'm dead. It just killed me, bro. All four of them jumped at me at once. Four. Holy f With Fang now dead and trying to make his way back down into the cave, I just kind of ventured on through. Hmm. Seems kind of empty here. Where is... Oh my god, there they all are! I would kite whatever creatures would follow me down this little cavern way here and do my best to take him out with this assault rifle. I did my best to clear this whole passageway out. As you can see, it's quite a tight little tunnel, so there's no real roof for me to cling onto and, you know, keep myself safe. This also gave Fang enough time to come and catch back up. And then we were able to charge our way through and get up to some heights and to some safety. Day 98 and we're still playing Spider-Man Simulator in the ice cold cave. Oh no, I knew the f*** was going to hit me there. Oh my god. Yeah, I died, died. And yes, unfortunately, Fang had died. You know what I never thought would happen in this game? Oh, shit! Fuck! <laughs> yes, jump scares. Who would have thought that this was a horror game? After a little while of thinking of how I'm going to get past this next passageway, I knew that there was a Pelovia right there, and I just had to take the damage. But thankfully, because of my OP armor that I'm wearing, it didn't really hurt us too bad so i was able to run through it to an open area and get some height i could hear the artifact but there was a lot of creatures protecting it once i had felt that it was kind of safe i just rushed straight to it you're my artifact now sucker finally there we have it we had secured the last artifact and even got the achievement for it we just had to get our butts safely out of this cave which surprisingly wasn't too hard. It's already day 99 and I really underestimated how long it would take us to do these caves. Yes, just as a reminder, I'm doing 20 minute days, which means I had to rush through and speed run as much of these as possible. But I can safely say we have secured all 10 artifacts. And that's a pretty cool achievement in my eyes. But because it's day 99, we don't have any time to really put some levels in our creatures or breed up a decent, you know, army to fight. So yes, at this point, I'm just carting over whatever dinos I possibly can to the obelisk. I will only be fighting the gamma bosses, so maybe this will be achievable? I don't know. Let's find out. It's already day 100, and we're finally ready to fight the gamma broodmother. All I have left to do now is take all of these artifacts out of their pedestals and place them in the obelisk. We have a little bit of a scuff situation here with the dinos that I have. The levels kind of suck, but the trikes at least have ascendant saddles, so maybe that'll help. I had brought over basically every dino that I have either bred or tamed along this whole journey, including Mr. Honeybaits. I plan on riding Mr. Honeybaits because I think it's kind of my strongest dino right now. Of course, I brought Fang along for this one too. Honestly, in this situation, I'm going to need as much help as I can get to defeat this broodmother. We got into the boss arena and uh, I, I couldn't find Mr. Honeybaits and the broodmother was coming to kill us really quick. So I just jumped on the closest trike that I could find and sent my whole army in to go and fight. My plan was just to kind of sit back and shoot with my assault rifle for as long as I possibly could. But then I started seeing some of our dinos die. Things are looking like this is possibly going to happen. We got the broodmother down to its half health. But soon after, our dino army started dropping like flies. That's when I enacted an old strategy of ours that we just used in one of the caves. Get up high with some grapple hooks and shoot down. There was one problem though. I didn't know the broodmother could shoot up. 
Oh shit, it hit me! It oh, killed my armor! Oh no. Dude, I'm almost out of bullets too. I have a spare crossbow and a bunch of arrows. Uh, hopefully it does enough damage. Oh no, 100 damage per hit? That's not good. I'm not too good at maths, but if we're only doing 100 damage per hit and it has 98,000 health left and I have very limited arrows, I don't think we can defeat the Broodmother. Uh, yeah, so we lost. We lost against the Broodmother. All of our main dinos are dead, but that was day 100, so we have to end the challenge here. If you'd like to see us complete this and uh, be amongst all the action, feel free to come join us over on Twitch. I'll continue playing there. If this video does get 20,000 likes, maybe I'll upload a version of us completing the rest of this island, all the way up to the Overseer. But till next time, guys, thank you for watching. Peace.